one's like a big hopper. That doesn't look like a hopper. You must use your imagination, Sarah. Yep, yep, yep. It won't look like what it's supposed to look like unless you can imagine it. I still don't see a hopper. Okay, Ducky, your turn. <gasps> that one looks like sweet bubbles. <laughs> oh, I am sorry, Spike. It only looks like sweet bubbles, but it is not. No, no, no. <laughs> but maybe you can find some in the trees. <laughs> Hey! Look at that one! Chomper! And he is eating the sweet bubbles. But I don't even like sweet bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> Petrie? Spike? Spike, what you do? Oh no! No! All I see is the day in front of us. All I see is the day in front of us. Burning bright with a newborn sun. Come fall on me. Hills to climb and valleys to roam. Oh, streams to follow all the way home. To the land before time. Tree stars. And? Everyone know you know eat tickly tree stars. Tickly tree stars, bad luck. Everyone know that. No one knows that. I've seen this before. It's rare and very sweet. But it doesn't bring bad luck. <gasps> Spike, no! Give me bad luck. Tree stars! Oh! See? Me not fall if Spike not eat tree stars. That's not why you fell. Look, Petrie, if Spike doesn't eat any more tickly tree stars, will you stop talking about bad luck? No, it's not okay. Me Uncle Toronto, no leaf eater who no leaf eater who eat it and get bad luck. <laughs> Uncle Toronto, that guy's full of crazy stories. Me know, and me not stop thinking about them. So try to think about something you're not thinking about. Like what? What about a different story? Ruby is a good storyteller. Yep, yep, yep. Sure. How about one that takes place in the mysterious beyond? Chomper and I were on our way to the Great Valley, and Red Claw was trying to stop us. What is that smell? I don't smell anything, but your sniffer does smell more smells than mine. Ew, it's awful. More awful than getting caught by Red Claw? Then follow me while I lead.
surprised because he wasn't expecting it. Wait a minute. You're telling me water just jumped out of the ground? <laughs> you have some imagination, Ruby. But I saw it too. Yeah, right. Well, maybe it's something you have to see yourself to know you saw it. Huh? You want us to go to the mysterious beyond just to see waters jump? No, Sarah. Though, it's really not that far into the mysterious beyond. Yeah, it's just beyond the sheltering grass. I would like to see the waters that jump into the sky. Yup, yup, yup. <laughs> I'd like to see it too. I don't believe you guys are serious about this. You'll believe it when you see it. Adventuring, adventuring. To the jumping water place. You really think that water jumps? How about rocks or big tree stumps? And what if bad luck come with us? Don't make a fuss. I know the meadow's really there. There's jumping water everywhere. You'll never know unless you go. So if we go adventure. Okay, fine. Let's go see this water that supposedly jumps. <gasps> I cannot wait to see water that jumps. Yup, yup, yup. What's wrong, Ruby? Uh, nothing. Just, uh, this tree isn't as familiar as I remembered it. We lost. We lost. Oh, this is Spike's fault. He ain't bad luck tree stars. <laughs> How can we be lost when we're going somewhere that doesn't even exist? Oh, wait. We just go this way. And we're on our way. See, Petrie? Nothing bad has happened. There's no reason to be scared of bad luck. It have been good trip so far. Maybe bad luck get lost instead of us. <laughs> Maybe we have good trip. <laughs> it's okay. It's probably just... Wanna go back? That's okay with us. Me too. Well, I'm not a scaredy egg. Petrie, big scaredy egg. Oh, too big a scaredy egg to go back alone. That for sure. Hey, wait for me. Something bad happened? <sighs> no, everything's fine. Let's go. Littlefoot, you are not 
walking the way you usually do. Don't don't worry about it. <gasps> we wouldn't have to worry if we knew what not to worry about. I stepped on a ground prickly. <gasps> oh no no no! Shh. It it doesn't hurt that bad. But if Petrie finds out. Mm, he'll think it's bad luck that brought you bad luck. Me feel bad, Spike so hungry. Yeah, and whose fault is that? If you weren't so afraid of bad luck, maybe he could eat. Maybe you find delicious no bad luck tree star there. Spike, what are you doing? Why do you have a log on your head? <laughs> because Spike have bad luck. And because me think they're tree stars in log. Careful, Spike! Duck! <laughs> Spike! Up! Down! No! See? Spike never should eat bad luck plant. No, Petrie. You're saying that he has bad luck is the problem. Huh? It's all Spike's fault! <laughs> Surprise, Skywater! Happens all the time! And the sky puppies we saw earlier usually mean Skywater later. But still... Uh, could we talk about this somewhere drier? Look! The water's jumping! If Ruby says there is water that jumped, then I know there is. And I want to see it. <laughs> well, we're not going anywhere with all this... Sky water? Hey! The bright circle is coming out from behind the sky, Puffies. Then we will go see the waters that jump. Yup, yup, yup. But nothing else better happen. The sky water caused the running mud. That's all. But what caused the sky water? <laughs> and sky fire. Sky fire bad luck. And you got a ground prickly in your foot. <gasps> ground prickly? Oh, that very bad luck. Thanks, Ducky. Well, we're not having all bad luck. The running mud slid us all the way to the end of the sheltering grass. Okay. Everybody ready? I think yes. 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 No. Well, let's get this over with. Everything's going to be fine. Oh, everything fine. Everything fine, everything fine, everything fine, everything fine, everything fine.
us where we're going. I think she's right. Because I can smell something. It's not so bad once you get past the stinky pools, remember? That sure smells bad. Yup, yup, yup. I still don't see jumping water. <gasps> wow. Oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Just wait. You still have to see what you haven't seen yet. than usual. See? Bad luck. Oh, this day doomed from the start. Let's just get him cleaned up. <laughs> Stay there. <laughs> <laughs> Does he still smell bad? We get the mud off. <coughs> oh. No, oh, he still smell. Bad luck. Well, we have to go home now anyway. I don't care how far back he is, I can still smell him. Everybody listen to Petrie. Petrie right. Spike make bad luck when he eat tickly red tree stars. You know, Petrie, I...
I think you do, Chomper. Sharp teeth like you can smell things much better than we do. So if we don't like the smell, Red Claw must hate it. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you! Thanks, thank you! Spike. Oh, Spike! It's good luck you fell in mud and smell so bad. Wait! First it was bad luck, now it's good luck? It wasn't good luck. It was good thinking. Right, Spike? <laughs> First time for everything. Good luck, bad luck, me no care. As long as we safe. Thank you, Spike. <laughs> <laughs> Your smell is not so bad. No, no, no. <laughs> mm, those tree sweets look delicious. I can't wait for them to fall from the trees. You won't have to wait another moment, Tria. Not while I'm around. <laughs> For you, Tria. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Topsy. Ugh, the grown-ups. <laughs> you see, Sarah? Three horns can do anything they set their mind to, and be the best at it, too. All I see is the day in front of us. All I see is the day in front of us. Burning bright with a newborn sun. Come follow me. Hills to climb and valleys to roam. Oh, streams to follow all the way home. To the land before time. Of course I do, Sarah. Now, Topsy. <laughs> well, I'm glad someone believes me. I wish it were true. It is true, Sarah. You're a three horn, so be proud. We're the best among the crowd. And you know that we can do. What we set our minds to do anything. Listen while I sing. You can do anything if you 
just watch me. You will agree. Trees are no match for my leg. Watch this rock crack like an egg. My horns slice, and yes, there's more. I can really roar, do anything. Come and join me, sing. We can do anything. Three horns are the best. Put us to the test. We'll do anything. <laughs> <laughs> You see, Sarah? I do now. Three horns really can do anything. Look, everybody, I have a new trick. I call it log running. If you watch carefully, you can do it too. First, you get on the log. This is the hard part. <laughs> then, you stand up. This is the harder part. Do not fall off. The harderest part is next. Now, you start running on top of the log. The faster, the better. Now I am going faster and faster. Go, go, go! Whoa, that looks like fun. Log running is fun. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and it is very easy to learn. I can show you how to do it. I can. Hey, I'll give it a try, Ducky. So what if I get a little wet? Move over. I'm going to try, too. Come on, Petrie. Petrie, not sure. Little foot try? Oh, no. Not me, Petrie. Hmm? Four-footers like us can't get our feet that close together when we run. But it sure is fun to watch. Okay, here goes nothing. <laughs> that was fun, while it lasted. It doesn't look that hard. <laughs> Come on, Petrie, your turn. Petrie, not sure about this. Me not good runner like Chomper, me flyer. Well then, if you start to fall, you can always fly off the log, Petrie. Oh yeah, me can fly. Uh, okay, me try. Me give up. Guess it's not so easy after all. We just need to practice until practice isn't practice anymore. Yeah, we could get as good as Ducky or even better. Chopper, you are not better than me at log running. Oh, no, no, no. Hey, why don't you practice? Then, when we're all ready, we can have a game to see who can log run the longest. This is going to be a fun game, especially when I win! Don't count your hatchlings before they hatch, Chomper. Me agree, because me going to win. Oh, no, no, no! I will win! Once I can get back on my log. What game is this? The Great Log Running Game. Chomper, Ruby, Peachy, and Dicky are going to see who can stay on their log the longest. Look at them go! That's a game for two-footers, not four-footers like us. Whoa! whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> log running doesn't look so hard to me. Huh? Mm -hmm. Three horns can do anything better than 
anyone, two footer or four. That's a fact. Just watch. <gasps> Step aside, two footers. Let me show you how a real champion does it. <laughs> <laughs> for helping, Spike. See you back at the watering place. Okay, tell me. Why are you limping? I slipped off a log. No big deal. Oh, yes, it is. Your ankle is all swollen up. Here, these will ease the pain. Trisha, you bring some nice soothing mud and put it on the hurt. <laughs> don't bother with the mud. I've got to get back to practice log running. I don't think so. You'll be okay, but you need to stay off that ankle for a while, Sarah. Okay, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> for a mud bath. <laughs> this is really fun! <laughs> sure is! Me want to have fun, too. Somebody hurry up and fall! Hmm. We need another log, Petrie. Come on, Spike. What do you think, Spike? Can you knock one down? <laughs> wow, you make it look so easy. <sighs> okay, let's go. Tree. Thanks, guys. You and Spike should give it a try, Little Foot. It's really fun. Oh, no, not us. You saw what happened to Sarah. <laughs> well, feels pretty good. Thanks for helping. Are you sure your ankle is okay? I'm sure. Time to go win that log running game. It'll be so easy. If it's so easy, how did you hurt your ankle? Accidents happen, but I can handle it. I'm a three horn. That's what I'm afraid of. What are you afraid of? Oh, nothing, Topsy. It's just Sarah twisted her ankle at the watering place, but she says it's okay now. Of course it's okay. <laughs> Takes more than a bad ankle to keep a good tree horn down. Dad's right, Tria. I'm feeling fine. Ready to go back and tackle my log again. I want to win that game. Log? Game? What's all this? My friends are playing a log running game, Dad, and I'm going to win. Well, just what exactly is log running? Well, you get on the log in the water, and then you start running, and the log spins as you run. It's easy. Why would you want to do something silly like that? To prove that three horns can do anything they set their mind to, and be the best at it, remember? 
Just like you said, Dad. Well, uh, uh, of course three horns can do anything they set their mind to. Uh, uh, they, they just don't set their mind to things like log running. But, Dad, you didn't say anything about that. You said three horns could do anything. Yes, just not that. You can forget about playing that game, Sarah. Some things just aren't meant to be. only one thing to do. I gotta prove to everyone that I can win that log running game. Okay, everybody. Let's start the great log running game. On your mark. Get set. Go! Huh? Oh, dear. <gasps> what? Me done. <laughs> <laughs> Ducky, Ruby, and Chomper have gotten really good. This game might take a while. <laughs> Hold it! Stop the game! Whoa! <laughs> I am the only one still going. <gasps> Do I win? Yes, Ducky, you! Not so fast. You guys started without me, but the game doesn't count unless I'm playing, too. But, Sarah, what about your ankle? You should My ankle is fine. Where's my log? Uh... Never mind, I'll get my own. Ducky not win? Well, sort of, but not really. I do not care. It is just a game. <gasps> Just a game. I'll show them. Three horns can do anything they said. They're mine too. So why can't I get on top of this dumb log? Whoa! Watch out, Sarah! You're getting too close to the fast water! I can handle it! I'm a three-horn! Uh-oh. We have to stop her, or she'll end up going over Roaring Falls! Ruby, Chomper, Ducky, use your logs to try to catch up with Sarah! Right! Let's get moving and go! Be careful! We don't want to have to save you, too! Fast water log runners to the rescue! Littlefoot, need help, too! Okay, Petrie, you keep an eye on Sarah from the sky. Tria, have you seen Sarah? 
No, dear. Hmm. Well, I'm going to go look for her. If she's gone to the watering place to play that silly game after I told her not to, why, I'll... I know, I know. You're going to be very upset. Remember, Topsy, you were young once, too. I was? Huh. That's where I'm going. That rock could block the fast water and, and stop Sarah from going over the falls. But Mr. Threehorn, it's so big, no one can move it. A Threehorn can? if he sets his mind to it. Now watch me. Let us help! Okay, boys. All together now. Sorry I disobeyed you, Dad. You better be. But I'm so glad that you're all right. We did not finish our game, Sarah. Do you still want to play? No, thank you. <laughs> I think Sarah's learned her lesson. Lesson? Huh. I don't have anything to prove. After all, I stayed on my log all the way down the fast water. <laughs> I meant to do that. <laughs> and that's why tree stars change color before the cold times. Wow, that was a great one, Grandpa. Yes, tell us another story so we can listen to it. Yeah. Yes! yes. <laughs> oh, all right. Uh, now, let's see. Oh, I know. Once many cold times ago, there was a young longneck named Star Watcher. Every night, he climbed to the top of a hill to look at the sky stars. But one night, the sky stars decided to come down out of the sky. They wanted to take a look at the long neck who was always looking at them. The sky stars said hello to Star Watcher and asked if he would like to visit them up in the sky. Are you sure that's how it happened? Huh? Uh, 
I'm not so sure you're telling that story right. All I see is the day in front of us. All I see is the day in front of us. Burning bright with a newborn sun. Come follow me. Yes, to climb and valleys to roam. Oh, seems to follow all the way home. To the land before time. I think you must be forgetting the stories in your old age. Sorrow, is that you? It's me, all right. I thought I'd never find you. I can't believe it. After all this time, I'd given up hope. I never gave up. Like green food in cold times, it, it may, may shrink, shrink away, away, but, but it, it will, will always grow, grow back. back. <laughs> <laughs> Grandpa? Who is this? Children, I want you to meet an old friend of mine. His name is Sorrow. It's a pleasure to meet you all. But who's this? A sharp tooth? <laughs> <laughs> That's Chomper. He was hatched by Littlefoot. And now he's living with us. Yeah. I want to learn how different dinosaurs can all get along. Well, you couldn't have found a better teacher. It was good to hear you tell one of the long neck stories again. Grandpa's great at telling stories. Oh, I know. Your grandpa was a great story speaker. Story speaker? What's that? A story speaker would travel the land, telling the great long neck stories to all the long neck herds. And you were a story speaker, Grandpa? Your grandpa was one of the finest story speakers ever. I tried to learn every story I could from him. Oh, well, I, I just wanted everyone to remember our important past. <laughs> Me like stories. <laughs> <laughs> I do too, I do, I do. <laughs> yeah, Grandpa, Sorrow, could you tell us one of the great long neck stories? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I think we might be able to remember a story or two. Now, who knows how long necks got their name? Oh, it is because they have long necks. Yep, yep, yep. Everyone knows that. But did you know that long necks didn't always have long necks? They didn't? Many cold times ago, before you or I had hatched, Long necks had short necks. Back then, the trees were very short, so they could eat tree stars from the top of the trees. The trees would sing to the bright circle every day as it crossed the sky. The bright circle liked their song so much that it reached down and pulled the trees until they were very tall. That way, they would be closer to the sky when they sang their bright circle songs. But now, the tree stars were so high that the short-necked long necks couldn't reach them. That night, the night circle felt sorry for them and reached down to comfort them. The light made them feel better. And so, they lifted their heads up to get closer to the night circle. In doing so, their necks stretched enough to reach the tree stars. The kindness of the night circle helped us become long necks. And that 
is how long necks got their long necks. That was a very good story. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Looks like talking about tree stars made Spike hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Great to get to tell stories all the time. It is an honor to tell the great long neck stories. And a very important job. But some of the long necks have begun to forget their stories. That's why you have to come back and be a story speaker again. I, what? Oh, I don't think I can. We'll travel the land, telling everyone the great long neck stories, just like we used to. It, it sounds like a nice idea. So, you're going to be the story speaker again, Grandpa? Of course he is! Sorrow, I'm sorry. I know how important the stories are. And I loved being a story speaker, but that was long ago. Things are different now. What do you mean, Grandpa? My place is here in the Great Valley, with you and Grandma and all the others. But. You're the story speaker. The long necks need you. I need you. I can't tell the stories on my own. Sorrow, I am very sorry. But even though my days of wandering have passed... Then you've turned your back on the long necks and all of our traditions. Sorrow, wait! I have nothing left to say to you. feel bad for Sorrow. He's hurt and angry, and I don't want him to feel that way. I had hoped he and I would be able to tell the great stories together. Uh, but those days are long gone. Remembering, remembering, is a kind of a funny thing. It makes me think of time gone by. Friends are made by saying hi. Thoughts I'll always hold dear. Remembering makes reappear. But even when the thoughts are sad, I'll always have remembering. I had hoped Sorrow would someday become a story speaker. He knows the stories as well as I ever did. Why didn't you tell him? Well, I never had the chance. And now Sorrow's too angry to listen to me. Well, it's sad, really. I've already begun to forget some of the long neck stories. I can't let the long neck stories be lost. I've got to find Sorrow. Sarah's footprints lead out into the mysterious beyond. Who? Who is it? <gasps> Come on out. I I'm not scared of you. Why would you be scared of me? Oh, Chomper. I, I was just... What are you doing? I'm following you. 
What are you doing? I'm following Sorrow's footprints. I have to bring him back. Grandpa wants him to be the new story speaker. Wow! Then you're gonna need my sniffer so you can find him fast. <laughs> I got him! Then let's go. He went into the fast water. Wow, that looks big. Maybe to us, but Sorrow's a full-grown long neck. He could just walk across. Maybe we can walk across, too. See? It's not that deep. Whoa! <laughs> I think it might just be a little too deep for me to walk across. Hmm. It might not be too deep for me. See? Can I get a ride? Sure. Hop on. Thanks. Now just keep going straight. <laughs> A big long neck like Sorrow probably just stepped right over this ledge. <laughs> for me. Almost! Eh, almost! Not quite. But maybe a whole pile of rocks will help us climb over. <laughs> Too bad Sarah's not here. She's really good at pushing things around. <laughs> there. That should do it. Let's give it a try. <laughs> yeah, it worked, little foot. We make a pretty good team, Chomper. Yeah, we do. <laughs> now let's go try to catch up with Sorrow. Stronger. <sighs> Come on, little foot. I'm coming, I'm coming. See? There he is. Little foot? Chomper? What are you doing following me? We came to ask you to come back to the Great Valley. You need to talk to my grandpa. I don't have anything more to say to him. Why are you so mad at Littlefoot's grandpa? If he doesn't come with me to be the story speaker, all the great stories will be forgotten. Well, why can't you be the story speaker? Well, because he's the story speaker. I can't do it by myself. I can't. <laughs> Oh, no. Ah! Ah! Run! Ah! 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 Ah
Oh, thank you, Sorrow. You saved us. You shouldn't have followed me. Those rocks are now blocking the way back to the Great Valley. Oh no, we're trapped. What are we gonna do? We will be okay. Maybe we can climb over. There's no way. We might be stuck here forever. Chomper, just take a deep breath and calm down. I don't think I can. It's dark and it's stuffy. Close your eyes. Think of a sky filled with puffies until we can find a way out of here. Did your grandpa ever tell you the story of Tall Stepper? Tall Stepper? I don't think so. Tall Stepper grew up to be a great long neck leader. But when he was young, just about your age, he learned a great lesson about being brave. Tall Stepper and his little sister were playing one day and having a great time. They were having so much fun that the wind became very jealous. The wind swirled and blew around Tall Stepper's sister and carried her into the air and up into its wind cave in a tall, tall mountain. Tall Stepper was scared to follow the wind up into its wind cave, but he knew that if he was going to save his sister, that is what he would have to do. When Tall Stepper reached the cave, the wind made a deal with him. If he could beat the wind in a race down the mountain, his sister would be released. Tall Stepper knew it would be dangerous, but he knew he had to do it to save his sister. No one had ever beaten the wind before. Tall Stepper found the courage he needed to race faster than any long neck before him. Because Tall Stepper found courage when he was afraid, he was able to beat the wind down the mountain. The wind kept his promise and brought Tall Stepper's sister back from the cave. Tall Stepper grew into a great leader. And whenever he needed to be brave, he remembered how he once had the courage to beat the wind. And sometimes, when I need courage, I think of Tall Stepper too. Wow. Thanks for telling us that story, Sorrow. Yeah. I feel better now. Little Fort! Little Fort! Grandpa? Little Fort? Yeah! I hear him too! Grandpa? Grandpa? Little Foot, me find you! Petrie! What are you doing here? Me find them! Everyone, over here! you guys find us? We followed your footprints to follow you up into the canyon. Then we heard the rock slide. We heard you yelling, too. <laughs> <laughs> Sorrow, 
There's something I want to talk to you about. About what I said earlier? I'm sorry about that. No, no, sorrow. I think you should be the new story speaker. Me? But I, I can't tell the great stories without you. But Sorrow, you told us a story. The one about Tall Stepper. We were really scared. But your story helped us feel a lot better. You see, Sorrow, you saw a chance for one of the great stories to teach something important at a time of need. That's what a good storyteller does. That's what a story speaker does. So, you really think I'm ready to be a story speaker? I know you are. Me too. That's right. <laughs> I just wish I had told you earlier. I... I don't know what to say. <laughs> I thought story speakers always had something to say. Maybe you're right. In fact, this reminds me of the story about the very first story speaker. Her name was First Voice. One day, First Voice came upon a great cave. But when she walked into the cave, 